iPadOS 26.1 just got released and let's see how it runs on this iPad Pro from 2018. I'll talk about the new features of iPadOS 26.1 on this iPad and also about the new iPadOS features that this iPad will not get. And I'll save my comments about the performance for the end of the video as well. Let's just get to it. The headlining feature on iOS 26 is the option to set liquid glass to either tinted or clear. Apple is basically letting you customize liquid glass. But on iPadOS 26.1, I think it's the return of slide over which is the headlining feature. To get into slide over, what you have to do is be in windowed mode. That's the first thing. And when you are in windowed mode, all you have to do is tap on the colored icons on the top left of the window. For example, I'm on the photos app here. If I tap on this and then hold on the green button over here, I'll get an option to enter slide over. Once I do that, my app would go into slide over. So as you can just see, this is how the app now looks. This is because on iPadOS 26.1, slide over works differently to how it worked, say, on iPadOS 18. It is not the exact slide over version that we had with prior iPadOS versions. Previous iPadOS versions let you have a stack of floating apps that you can switch between. But with this version of slide over, that is limited to only one app. But the good news is that this app can be configured to be any size you want. So over here, you can see that this app is now, you know, pretty much taking the whole of the screen. I could make it smaller and now that's the size of the slide over app. So, you know, I could put it back into slide over. I could bring it back and I could do things with it. Uh, I could, you know, make it all the way big like this and then, you know, even slide it over to the other side. So now it's going to the left of the screen. And if I do that again, it comes back again. You can see that this photos app which I have has a border around it. That border is what indicates that this app is in slide over. I'll now open Safari and if I want to access my slide over app, I would just slide over from the right side because that's where I put it and there you go. And as I said before, this could be any size. It could be as small as this. It could be, uh, you know, wider like this. It could be, I could put it here and make it really big. And that's basically a full screen app, but this is still slide over. The one thing I really do not like about this version of slide over is that it only works on windowed mode. I would have loved to see it also work on the full screen app mode. I like windowed mode on this iPad, but on my iPad mini, I stick with full screen apps and I would have loved to see slide over on that mode too. But overall, I'm glad that slide over is back in some other way. And I hope with iPad OS 26.2, let's say, or maybe even later, Apple iterates on this and it gets even better. Oh, and by the way, just in case that you didn't know, to, you know, now I'm on windowed mode. To go back to full screen, I don't have to go back to the settings app. There's always a toggle which I really love. It's the, you know, on the control center, there's a windowed apps toggle which I have. If I turn that off, everything becomes full screen. That's basically it. And, you know, if I want to go back into slide over and stuff like that, go, I'll go into control center, click on windowed apps. There you go. I should get my slide over app back. Now let's talk about the liquid glass customization option. When iPadOS 26 launched, Apple hit most of the liquid glass customization in accessibility. But this is such a prominent feature, Apple is putting it right and center on the settings app. So if I go into the settings app, uh, let me get rid of this slide over window. And if I go into display and brightness, you see this option for liquid glass. In here, you have these two options, either clear or either tinted. And when you tap on tinted or clear, you get a preview of how things would look. Let me know in the comments what option you are going for. I asked about this on my socials and it looks like a lot of people are sticking with the clear option. Another simple UI change is that on the Photos app when you play a video, the scrubber looks different and it looks like this. Oh, and by the way, this is the new Apple TV animation. Also talking about Apple TV, another change is that if I was to search for Apple TV, you now see the new TV app icon which looks like this. Another new feature with iPadOS 26.1 is that if I go into the music app, and then if I was to play a song, I could swipe on the name of the track to change it. So I could just do this and the track would change. If I was to bring it to the full screen and then I could still change the track just like this. The next option I want to show you is on the lock screen. So, you know, when I go, when I lock my iPad, when I lock my iPad and, you know, when I bring up the lock screen, I could always swipe to get to the camera, right? I can't remember which iPad OS version brought this feature, but it's always been like that. But now if you didn't like it for some reason, you can easily turn it off. So going to the settings app, and then if I go into the camera section, there's a toggle at the bottom that lets you turn this off. Another option that we are getting is now that you can change the location of your capture files. Again, if I go into general in the settings app and then go into local capture, you now have this option where you can decide where you want to save your files. In terms of new iPadOS 26.1 features that this iPad does not support are the new language support on Apple intelligence. But you know, this iPad never got Apple intelligence. So, you know, it doesn't matter, I guess. Okay, let's talk about performance. 
I can't prove this scientifically as I don't have two iPads next to each other comparing the performance between, you know, iPad OS 26 and 26.1. But in terms of how I remember iOS 26 to be, I can say that iOS 26.1 is definitely an improvement. I've been using iOS 26.1 throughout the beta and I, even on the first beta I found like you know it to be more snappier, more faster. Mind you I'm not talking about M4 iPad Pro levels of performance. This chip is now 7 years old. For a 7 year old chip it works fine. I know most people will disagree when I say this but my experience on this iPad running iPad OS 26 was that it ran equally or better than iOS 18. With iOS 18, I did not use this iPad much, but with iPadOS 26, I'm using it a lot more. But at the same time, I'm also noticing that the A12X processor on this iPad is showing its age, which is kind of expected because this operating system is doing much more. Would you have preferred this iPad not supporting iOS 26 or supporting iPadOS 26 whilst being, you know, limited or slow in certain aspects? In terms of battery life, I don't see any differences between iPadOS 26 and prior iPadOS versions. When I made a video of iPadOS running on this iPad when the iPadOS first launched, most of the comments were how it degraded the performance. I'll link that video up if you want to see. But yes, for the first few days, it did feel slow and battery life took a hit. But after the few days, it all got sorted in the end, after, you know, the iPad had indexed everything that it had to. Going back to iPadOS 26.1, yes, this definitely feels better than iPadOS 26, given that Apple has now had more time to iron out issues and also fix some bugs. I expect iPadOS 26.2 to be even better, hopefully. And as I finish this video, the developer beta of iPadOS 26.2 is out and I'm gonna install it. Let me know if you have any questions and consider giving me a sub so you know when I make a video on iPadOS 26.2 running on this iPad. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll see you in the next one.